Hello everyone, my name is Pavan Arora, so I am here with another video on ANOVA and today we will talk about the graphs that we are getting in the mini tab when we are doing ANOVA and those graphs are mostly for the assumptions of residues okay so today we will talk about what is residues and secondly what are the assumptions we have in residues uh, in ANOVA okay so the first assumption for residual is normally distribution so we have to check whether residuals are normally distributed or not so we'll do it by the normality check the second thing we have to do is independent means the residuals are independent or not so we do it using a, a correlation diagram between fits and residuals and the last thing is the constant variance so we have to check whether is there any trend in the residual it should not be so your residual should be should have the constant variance it should not have a particular trend for few of your data points so these are the three major assumptions of residuals please note if you are ANOVA you are doing so as I said last time in my previous video so for ANOVA we are checking whether it's a constant variance or not whether your data is normally distributed or not and then you will check the means of different shifts or different vendors or different uh, salaries of different regions or you indirect way you are predicting through or you are doing the hypothesis testing using ANOVA on the basis of these assumptions after that you also need to check in ANOVA all these three assumptions for residuals if these three assumptions are not right indirect way we will say your ANOVA is not relevant so please note this point these three assumptions for ANOVA checking is very important and please also note it's not only for ANOVA but also when we do the regression correlation those videos also I will share in future for those also these assumptions for residuals are important so we have to check always whenever we are doing any hypothesis testing uh, to check whether residuals are normally distributed are independent and finally should have the constant variance I mean there should not be any any trend okay and how do you check whether trend is there or not using run chart okay so first thing is we have to understand what is residual I'm telling you or I'm, I'm sharing with you in a very very simple way what is residual I'm using the same data which I used in my previous video uh, where I was checking the throughput of line A in three shifts so you can see in the in the row I have shift number one shift number two and shift number three data correct and this is for line number A which I named as data A okay and these are the data of throughput for each shift now what's the meaning of residuals so residuals is nothing but a difference between a difference between the data point and the average of that particular shift so I have the average here for shift number A or shift number 1 shift number 2 and shift number 3 and here these are the difference between the data point and the average of that particular shift so minus 2.8 is nothing but 91.4 minus 94.2 so same way I've, I've calculated the residuals for all and then the next thing is called fits fits means for this ANOVA case the fits is nothing but your average or the other way to get it is this data point minus the residuals so which is automatically coming as your average so these are the average you can see for the first shift so this is called the fits for first shift similarly when you have second shift you will have the fits or the average of second shift as fits and similarly for the third shift so this is called fits and residuals in case of ANOVA please note when we are doing any regression or correlation uh, study or hypothesis testing that time the fits will come from your regression equations it will not come simply as average okay why because when you are using uh, correlation and regression you have 
variable x and variable y but in our case when we are doing ANOVA we have a discrete or indirect way categorical x and variable y so this is the difference that's why so fits is coming from the average or indirect way the difference between the data point and residuals okay now I will show you how you can get these residuals and fits in mini tab and then we will also do the three tests for residuals in Minitab. Okay, let's move to Minitab now. So this is my Minitab, Minitab 17. If you are using Minitab 14, 15, 16, no problem. Almost the same uh, kind of tools we will use there as well. So I have the same data. These are the shift. These are the data of line number A uh, for throughput. Okay. Now if I go to stack, it's very simple, go to ANOVA and select one way ANOVA. So I have selected here response as data A and factor as shifts, okay. And then I will click on storage and I need the fits and residuals in my, in my column number C3 and column number C4 and then click OK. So when you click OK, you will get these. So today we are going to talk about these graphs, okay, one by one. And before that I want to show you these are the fits value you can see 94.21 all these are the average which I shown you in the excel file and then the average change when you enter into the shift number two and move on to shift number three your average will change or fits will change right and the residuals is nothing but the difference between the data point and the fits which I've shown you in the excel file okay now let's move on to the graphs of residuals so or the assumptions of residuals. So the first assumption which I told you is about the normality. So for normality assumptions, so this is the graph for normality to check whether residuals are normal or not. And we also have the histogram to check the normality part. But in these cases, I don't have the p-values. I can see by looking at the pattern, the, the, the data points are very close to the line. So I can see, yes, these are uh, looking normal distributed uh, about around zero. But I don't have a, a real proof or real number to say, okay, whether they are really distributed along, uh, along the line or not. So what I will do for that, so for normality, I will do a normality test for the residuals. How can I do it? Just go to the graph okay and you have here the probability plot uh, to check the normality or the other way just go to stat and the basic statistics and normality test you can go any you can do both the things let me select the normality test go to data uh, sorry not data the residues for variable and click ok when you click ok you will get the same graph let me open that one as well for you so we have this right and we have our normality so this is the same graph but it also have the p-value now here the p-value says 0 0.825 which is much higher than 0 0.05 so it means we have to go with the null hypothesis so null hypothesis says data is normal an alternative hypothesis says data is not normal so in this case I can say yes the data is normal because p-value greater than 0 0.05 fail to reject the null hypothesis so I will go with the null hypothesis says data is normal so this is the first check or assumption of residual to say whether data is normal or not correct now let's go to the second uh, test or the second assumptions which talks about which talks about the relationship between the fixed value fixed is nothing but your average value and the residuals so it's it shows there should not be any relationship between the fitted value and the residuals value so now if you see these are the fitted values right and these are the residuals values so how you get these graph this graph is nothing but it's a scatter plot between residuals and fit let me show you how you get it so just go to graph and select the scatter plot okay and this is a simple scatter plot it's not showing any uh, group or something so now you can select here as as y as residuals and x as sets and click ok so when you click ok you will get a scatter plot you can see the same plot 
which you are getting here right so this is nothing but a scatter plot which talks about the relationship between fits and residuals and in this case if i see it's showing me there is no relationship now how can i how i can say there is no relationship because it's not showing any any linear trend or any parabolic trend or any quadratic trend something so i will say there is no relationship now other way to prove whether there is any relationship or not is by using the regression so just go to stack go to regression and just go to simple fitted line plot okay and then you can select uh, the y as residuals x as predictor select linear and click okay so when you click okay you can see here uh, r square value 0 0 and also in the session window you can see there is a session window here right in the session window also your p value is very high uh, which is here so there is not any relationship r square value is 0 nothing is there so p value is also 1 so which means there is no correlation or there is no regression between uh, uh fits and residuals so i'm saying by by this i can i can say this is the second assumption right related to the related to the anova or residual plot okay the last assumptions of residual is checking the trends so you can see by looking at this chart this is nothing but a run chart of residuals with respect to all the observations by looking at this graph it is not showing me any trend it is not showing me any pattern like in some of the cases some of the observation which are very high and some of the observation which are very low up to some time but it is not showing me any trend and how can i get this graph or from where this graph is coming this is nothing but as i said it's a run chart between residuals and the observations different observations so how you can uh, draw this or how you can plot this just go to graph and uh, not sorry not go to graph just go to stack and go to control charts and in the control charts uh, you can go to sorry quality tools and go to run chart just select this run chart and here you have the data just select the data subgroup mostly uh for this case we don't have any subgroup because entire data is in one column so we are selecting subgroup size as one okay if you have two different subgroup sizes you can select two or three depends now what is the meaning of subgroup size please also understand sometimes when uh suppose your line is running and you are taking five sample at every time to check or to do the testing so i will say subgroup size is five if i am taking only one sample at a time So I will say subgroup size is one. So in this case, only one sample at a time. There is not like three or four sample at a time. So that's why the subgroup size is one. Okay. And when you click OK, you will get your run chart. And this is the same run chart if you compare these two. So this is your run chart, and this is the run chart which you are getting from the the residual values, right? Uh, okay. So I think there is a mistake. I should not select this data. i should select the residuals in this case so how can i do it just press control e and here instead of data a you have to select residuals and click okay and now you can compare your residuals plot with the or the run chart of residuals with with this chart which you are getting is almost uh, is 100% same i would say so that's how you can you can check the assumptions so by looking at these three assumptions first is normality there should not be any correlation between the fit and the residuals and the last is there should not be any trend in the residuals if you have any trend you will say there is a trend in the residuals so third assumption is not valid so my anova is not a relevant anova there is some issues okay so these are the test or the checklist for anova to say whether it's a relevant or not so this is about this graph i hope you like the video in the next uh, in the next video i will come back to you on the box plot you can see there is a chart which is generating for the box plot right so i will also tell you what is the meaning of box plot how to plot a box plot using these numbers and what are these lines and the upper limit lower limit and the other inside of box plot it's a very very important plot 
to compare the different shift to compare the different vendor to compare the different data for for different areas okay so that's why i am going to share with you in my next video about the box plot